off its lows, Mr. Speaker, early on in the pandemic. Consumer sentiment was up 11.9 per cent last week, the single largest increase in a budget month since the series first began in 1974, Mr. Speaker. And this week, Australia's AAA credit rating was again reaffirmed, Mr. Speaker. Now, as a result of this economic recovery underway, I was able to go and see it firsthand in the members' electorate in Barker, where I went to Murray Bridge and I went to Kookaburra Homes, Mr. Speaker, and I met Steve and his other staff, including apprentices working on cabinet making, Mr. Speaker. And th that business employs more than 40 people, more than 40 people, but indirectly supports hundreds of jobs through the supply chain. And he told us firsthand, Steve, how the home builder program had seen a massive jump in sales, Mr. Speaker, helping, in his words, to secure his business into the future. This is the economic recovery that is now underway. Now, Mr. Speaker, in the budget. We had a number of new initiatives to support businesses and families right across the country, like Steve's Kookaburra Homes. And these included the, um, the instant asset write-off, which was expanded Mr. Speaker, to allow our equipment machinery to be written off all in year one, Mr. Speaker, the loss carryback measure, and of course the income tax cuts for more than 11.5 million Australians. Mr. Speaker. Now, we know that only one side of this House supports lower taxes for Australians. Those opposite don't, because the member for McMahon took $387 billion of higher taxes to the last election. Higher taxes on your income, higher taxes on your savings, Mr Speaker, higher taxes on your investments. Mr Speaker, only those on this side of the House stand for lower taxes and leaving more money in Australians' pockets. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.